before Ghost Protocol, when you thought of Tom Cruise, you thought of him jumping up and down on Oprah's couch. But after Ghost Protocol, this guy. Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol is directed by Brad Bird, written by Josh Applebaum and Andre Nemec, and stars Tom Cruise, Jeremy Renner, Simon Pegg, and Paula Patton. And in Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, the Kremlin is bombed and the IMF is implicated in this bombing, so the US government disavows the entire agency, and Ethan Hunt and his ragtag team are the only ones left and they try to go after whoever's responsible who's also trying to start this nuclear war. Now, Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol was actually my very first Mission Impossible movie, which I'm thankful for because it, I liked it enough to go back and try and rewatch the older ones. And this still remains my favorite Mission Impossible movie. I think it's not just a good action movie, it's a great movie. Um, the action is incredible, the editing is masterful as well, and really what differentiates this from the other Mission Impossible mov movies is the tone it has, which is so fun, which is a first for the series. Now visually speaking, Ghost Protocol is a really exciting movie in the sense that every single location is really memorable and has a lot of personality and a lot of detail from the prison at the beginning of the movie to the Kremlin to the Burj Khalifa to Mumbai. And I, I've used this uh, phrase before, but it, the settings here really reminded me of video game levels in the sense that you really have an understanding of how these places are constructed and how the characters can move throughout them. And the cinematography here from Robert Ellswit is crisp and makes great use of wide angles, uh, especially during the big Burj Khalifa stunt, which I really have to talk about because that stunt, seeing Tom Cruise hanging outside the tallest building in the world, at least in 2011, um, to this day gives me chills. It's such a well constructed set piece and it's so refreshing to see action from these wide angles after the more handheld stuff that happened in the third movie. Um, and I also have to single out the sandstorm sequence that happens soon after. It's definitely a highlight because of how you know they use visual effects to create the sandstorm and it deliberately obscures the view of the audience so you feel just as confused and lost as Ethan Hunt. The sound in this movie is great as well. The movie makes good use of silence during a number of very tense sequences, especially this one hallway sequence uh, in Moscow, which I won't spoil. And Michael Giacchino takes a really interesting approach here with regard to the musical score because instead of putting in Lalo Schifrin's uh, theme only during during key moments, instead he lets the theme play out all throughout the movie, which kind of really helps the plot feel unified, you know, as it jumps from place to place, and it keeps that sense of adventure alive and kicking. And the editing here we have to talk about. The editing here by uh, Paul Hirsch is probably the best in the series, uh, because this movie finally hits the sweet spot in terms of pacing. Because uh, like Mission Impossible 3, things are constantly and smoothly moving from one event to another, but unlike Mission Impossible 3, um, the, the editing also provides just enough downtime to allow each set piece to conclude properly. And like I mentioned just a while ago, there are some very tense sequences here that are mostly devoid of dialogue, interestingly enough, that work so well because the editing gives you all the information you need to know just through visual cues, through the way people look at each other, um, through juxtaposition of images. I think of uh, there's a certain intel exchange scene that happens at the Burj Khalifa, which is so tense, but there's barely anything being said. And thank God, after three movies of having like really weird plot twists thrown in at the last minute, Ghost Protocol has a very accessible and easy to follow plot um, and there are no convoluted twists but it isn't a dumb plot because uh, the sequencing of events in this movie still makes sense in the context of the mission which is what really matters and I really have to mention that a lot of the dialogue in this movie as well especially from Simon Pegg's character Benji gets really really funny which is something that I don't think the series knew it needed until this happened because it really, really helps. In terms of acting, Tom Cruise doesn't really have much to do here dramatically, especially after the third movie, but he enters full action hero mode here, and he has a certain authority about him. They know he's a lot older than his, his fellow teammates, so they really play off that well. He plays more of a team leader in this movie, and you could make the argument that he's arguably more stuntman than actor in this movie, but he does those stunts pretty damn well. And I think Jeremy Renner is pretty underrated with how funny he is, because he does get quite funny in this movie in the awkward way his character is written, but he still pulls off the action scenes really well. Uh, and Simon Pegg is just such a welcome presence on screen, but he does not 
make his character into like a joke. Like he still takes his material seriously, he's never out of place. And Paula Patton, who is gorgeous to look at by the way, um, has an interesting mix of toughness and brashness about her. She's like the young, like hot-headed one in the team who kind of acts without thinking sometimes, and that was interesting. And in my opinion, you can really tell Brad Bird came from an animation background here because of how he doesn't seem to be limited by the physical boundaries of his sets. Um, he always finds a way to show us the action in a new way, whether the environment is cramped or wide open, which keeps us totally immersed. The way Brad Bird makes his action scenes here are significantly less brutal than J.J. Abrams, uh, but he films everything extremely well and always injects uh, suspense into, into these scenes, especially, again, that Burj Khalifa scene, which I can't get over. And Brad Bird's lighter, more adventurous tone for this franchise really makes Mission Impossible really fun to watch for the very first time, in my opinion. However, I do have a couple of minor issues with the movie. For one, it mostly has to do with the writing, because the whole concept of Ghost Protocol and the IMF being disavowed doesn't really amount to anything by the end, because even after the fact, it still kind of feels like they're proceeding as normal, except that their gear just keeps malfunctioning, which, by the way, I have to point out is a great little element they put in there, because once you see their gear start malfunctioning, uh, at the beginning of the movie, you get nervous like for the rest of it because you don't know if their gadgets are gonna work. And the main complaint here is that the villain played by Mikael Nikvist um, is is a bad villain, and I understand that. But when I rewatched this movie, it really the movie to me felt like it wasn't trying to make him the primary antagonist. It, he was just like a supporting player in like the grand scheme of things for me at least. But my complaint is that all the characters here, not just the villain, are pretty flat. You know. Um, there's barely any character development that goes on, and when it does happen, it feels really tacked on. Um, but really, like, these four team members we have here are pretty much, they kind of play one note for most of the movie, which is kind of disappointing after Mission Impossible 3. But those are very, very minor complaints, because for me, Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, like I said, is a great movie. Not just a great action movie, but a great movie itself, just in the way it's crafted. It's so well crafted, and it's all thanks to Brad Bird. For me, it's by far the most accessible Mission Impossible movie. This is the first one I'd show if someone was like slightly interested in the series. Um, and it's still my personal favorite. Like This is still the one to beat. All right, so those are my thoughts on Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. Have you guys seen it? What do you think about it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Whatever you thought, whether you agree with me or not, please leave me a comment. Let's have a conversation.